We previously proved the monotonic sequence theorem, link in the description. This theorem states that every bounded monotone sequence is convergent. This is a particularly useful theorem because it gives us a way to establish that a sequence is convergent without even knowing its limit. Today, we'll use this theorem to show that a recursively defined sequence is convergent, and then with that information, we'll be able to find its limit. Here's the sequence in question. It's defined like this. The first term is equal to 2, and every subsequent term is 1 half times the previous term plus 5. We could calculate the first handful of terms of this sequence just to get an idea how it behaves and make sure we understand the definition. The first term is 2. The second term is calculated by adding 5 to the previous term, so 5 plus 2 and then multiplying that by 1 half, which gives us 3.5. To get the next term, we add 5 to 3.5, and then multiply that by 1 half, which is 4.25. We could continue in this way, computing as many terms as we like. You may notice the terms appear to be increasing, and it also appears that they may be approaching 5. So we may think to use the monotonic sequence theorem, but to apply this theorem, we must prove that our sequence is both monotone and bounded. Let's start by proving that the sequence is monotone. We're going to prove specifically that it's increasing, that each a n plus 1 is greater than a n. Each term is greater than the preceding term, and we'll do this using mathematical induction. Link in the description to my lesson introducing this method of proof if you need to review. Every induction proof begins with a basis step, where we show that our desired result is true in the first applicable case. So for us, that means showing that the second term is greater than the first term, that the sequence starts off increasing. We see that's true because the second term we calculate calculated to be 3.5, which is greater than 2, 2 being the first term of the sequence. So at first, it appears that the sequence is increasing. That's the basis step. Now we can proceed to the induction step. In the induction step, we assume that our result is true for some k. That is, we assume that there's some term ak plus 1 that's greater than the previous term ak. This, of course, is a perfectly valid assumption, because in the basis step, we proved that this was true for k equals 1. From this assumption, we need to prove our result is also true in the subsequent case, that ak plus 2 is greater than ak plus 1. Now, if ak plus 1 is greater than ak, we can add 5 on both sides and have that ak plus 1 plus 5 is greater than ak plus 5. But then we could also multiply both sides of the inequality by one half and have that one half times ak plus one plus five is greater than one half times ak plus five. But then on the left, by definition of the sequence, this is the next term. And on the right, by definition of the sequence, that is also the next term. Thus, this on the left is ak plus 2, and this on the right is ak plus 1. And so we've shown as desired that ak plus 2 is greater than ak plus 1. And so, indeed, if one term is greater than the previous term, the next term is even bigger. And so, indeed, this sequence, by mathematical induction, is increasing. Each term is greater than the last. So we know our sequence is monotone, it is increasing, but we also need to prove that it's bounded. To prove that the sequence is bounded, well, for starters, we know it's bounded below because it's increasing, so its first term is in fact the smallest it gets, so that first term of 2 would be a lower bound. But then we also need to prove that it's bounded above, and to do that, we're going to again use induction, and we'll prove that it's bounded above by 5. 5, we think, is the limit, just from our computations, it appeared that it may be approaching 5. So we'll say that it's bounded above by 5, and we'll prove that with induction. Again, this begins with the basis step. To prove that all terms are less than or equal to 5 with induction, we begin by showing that the first term is less than or equal to 5. Of course, the first term is 2, and that is less than 5. So we can move on to the induction step. For the induction step, we assume that some term is less than 5. Then we could add 5 to both sides to have the ak plus 5 
is less than 5 plus 5, which is 10. But then we could multiply both sides by a half to have that 1 half times ak plus 5 is less than 1 half times 10, which of course is 5. But on the left, again, 1 half times ak plus 5, by definition of the sequence, that's the next term. That's ak plus 1. So this means that ak plus 1 is in fact less than 5. And thus, by induction, all terms of the sequence are less than 5. We showed that the first term is less than 5, and we showed that if some term is less than 5, the next term must be also. So indeed, it's bounded above. Now that we know our sequence is both monotone and bounded by the monotonic sequence theorem, it must have a limit. Let's say the limit of our sequence is L. Now that we know it exists, we can do some algebra to figure out what it is. Consider the limit of a n plus 1 as n goes to infinity. Note, this is really the same as the limit of a n. They're the same sequence, except a n plus 1 just skips the first term. The advantage of putting a n plus 1 here is that we can then replace it with what it's equal to based on definition of the sequence. A n plus 1 must equal 1 half times the previous term A n plus 5. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity of that. But then the factor of 1 half we can take out of the limit. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity of A n plus 5. The 5 is not affected by the limit since it doesn't have an n in it. But then the limit of A n we know is equal to L. So we have that the limit of a n plus 1 as n goes to infinity is equal to 1 half times l plus 5. But again, the limit of a n plus 1 is the same as the limit of a n. They're the same sequence. This one just skips the first term. So this on the left is also l. Hence, we have that l is equal to 1 half times l plus 5. Then imagine we distribute the 1 half. On the right, we'd have a half L, but we could subtract that from both sides, and thus on the left, we'd have L minus a half L, which is a half L. We'd also have a half times 5 on the right, which is 5 halves, so multiply by 2, and we get the limit is equal to 5. And so our original suspicions were confirmed. The limit of the sequence is 5. So that's an example of how to apply the monotonic sequence theorem. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Calculus 2 course and Calculus 2 exercises playlists in the description for more. If you found my videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to additional videos and extra practice, and if you join at the premium tier or above, you can access the lecture notes used in my courses. Thanks for watching.